The Nikon D5000 comes with a 12.3 megapixels DX format CMOS sensor, an innovative very angle 2.7 inch LCD, live view with D movie, an extended ISO range from ISO 100 to ISO 6400, a continuous burst speed up to 4 frames per second, and 19 scene modes. The Nikon D5000 comes with an instruction menu, software CD, AV cable, USB cable, battery charger, rechargeable battery, eyepiece cover, power cord, neck strap. For the lens kit, we have an 18 to 55 VR lens, and of course, the Nikon D5000 camera body. On paper, the D5000 is very similar to the D90, but there are certain key differences that are important to note. To help you understand better, we have with us a D90 body here. Side by side, we can see that the D5000 has a simpler uh, layout buttons than the D5000. Instead of the exposure button, we have in place of it an information button that's been moved from the back of the camera. Also, the shooting mode button has been dispensed with and has moved to the side of the camera, which I'll show you later. The exposure value button is still the same, but the autofocus button is also missing. And of course, the mode that has been moved from the left of the camera to the right. Without the mode dial, which is moved to the right side, there's only the connections on the side, which includes the GPS connection, the AV or USB connection, and also the HDMI connection. The buttons in front, it's still two buttons. However, you, other than the flash button, you have here the, the timer button, the function button, while with the D90, you actually have a bracketing button there as well. So that's another key difference. Other than DC in, which is not available on the D5000, you also don't have the switch for the manual and auto. Another difference with the D90 and the D5000 is that with the D90, the, you have your front dial as well as a custom button, while with the D5000, these are not available. While it may sound that the D5000 is missing a lot of the features of the D90, it's in fact not true. And the reason for that is because there's a lot of automated modes available in the D5000 that's not available in the D90. If you look at the mode dial, everything that's available on the D90 is included in the D5000 with extras such as the child baby mode as well as the scene mode which allows you to access a total of 19 scene uh, options for different situations. Picking up the D5000, it definitely feels like a very snug, comfortable camera. Uh, small, but not too small. If you've got big hands, it may be a trifle, but the access of the buttons is simple and definitely uh, should not be a problem, regardless of how you use it. The screen flicks up very well, uh, powering on the camera. We can see the information displayed as per other Nikon models. Pressing the info button, you will be able to access the different functions and change them accordingly. Obviously, setting into program mode will give you a larger set of settings should you need to. However, it's most likely that you will end up trying to use the scene modes that's available with the D5000 for easy shooting. By turning the dial, you can select a large range of different scenes for whatever photography situations that you may find yourself in. Of course, there's also 
portrait modes, landscape mode, which is a standard mode, and also child or baby mode as well. The D5000 is definitely a very simple camera to use. There's a lot of features that you can explore at your leisure, but if you've not used a DSLR before, there's absolutely no reason why you should not uh, choose a D5000 because you can definitely use it just like a, a prosumer bridge camera and benefit from the interchangeable lens as well. Live view, high definition movie, and 19 scene modes for different situations. Definitely all the features that you need for painless photography as well as features there for you to take up to a higher level.